What's going on everybody? Coach Al here and today I want to do another formation breakdown. This time shotgun normal. Maybe my favorite formation in the entire game. If not in the top five at least. It's very versatile in terms of sub packages, motions. Plus out of the 18 places in it they got like 16 great plays. I mean you could about make any of them work. We'll break all of that down today. First of all, let's start off with our sub packages. By default, it's an 11 personnel formation. One halfback, one tight end. So let's start off with the sub packages. Your first one is strong slot. It just puts your top receiver in the slot. Next, you got a halfback slot. It puts your top halfback in the slot. Next, you got your backup QB. That's self-explanatory. Tight end slot. It puts your top tight end in the slot. Then you got fullback, which puts your fullback at halfback. Then you got halfback sub, self-explanatory. You got wide receiver flip. It flips your X and your Z receiver, your top two receivers. And it's got the four wide receiver sub packages, which is really cool. It puts your fourth best receiver in the tight end spot. Now, when you think about all this, this formation is very versatile in terms of personnel. Again, at default, you have an 11 personnel formation. But you can also do a 20 or a 21 personnel. You got two tight end or two halfbacks and a tight end. Or you can go a 12 personnel. You got one halfback and two tight ends via the tight end slot. Or you can go with a 10 personnel, aka one halfback, zero tight ends, meaning a four wide set. Very versatile, very useful, and with all the cool plays that are in it, you could kind of run an entire offense. Actually, different kinds of offenses. With this formation alone. Now let's talk about the motions. Let's pick a basic drop back play. That way we can see everybody's movements. Okay. You press down. The first one pops up is your halfback. You can motion him to the right. He becomes a slot receiver. And you motion him to the left. It's the same thing on the left side. Okay. Next up is the tight end. You got two different things you can do here. You can move him, move him over to the left. Becomes basically an H back where he's sitting. And what that does, if you notice he's off the line, that moves uh, the Z receiver on the far right. It moves him to the line of scrimmage, if that means anything to you. Also, you can motion the tight end to the right side. He becomes a slot receiver. Really cool. All right, let's put him back in his natural position. Next, we got the Z receiver. He can only go one spot, and that's to the inner slot on the left side. You got a little trips look. Let's move him back. Next up, we got the X receiver, the far left. And the one thing you can do is move him to the slot on the right side. And last but not least is your slot receiver. You can do two things. You can move him to the right, make him a slot on the right side of the formation. Or you can motion him to the left again. And what this does is, uh, hopefully this will work. You motion him to the left. No, you put it to the left. It moves your slot receiver to the line of scrimmage and it moves your X receiver off the line of scrimmage because you got to have seven guys on the line of scrimmage at all times. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now let's move him back. So those are your motions. Again, very versatile. You can move everybody around, left or right. Really cool. Okay, now let's talk about the run game. All the run plays in this formation are pretty good. We'll start off with speed option. It's no different than the other speed option from the gun. You can hot rat it left or right. As you see right here, I just moved it to the left. And you just pick your spots. This is going against zone, it appears, so I cut up field. Very simple. Everybody and their brothers use speed option in the past. But this one is extra great, I guess, because you got a tight end blocking for you as well. Makes things a little bit better. But it's an awesome play for sure. By all means, use it if you have a quarterback that can run at least a little bit. Okay, next up is QB draw. I love QB draw from the gun sets because it's quick and you can move your quarterback pretty easily. You can uh, do the hot ratting left or right, all that good stuff. So it looks like we're going zone here. At default, you see the best way to look at this is look at the halfback's route. He's going to the right and he cuts up on a go route. If you hot route the run to the left, he cuts up to the left. So that kind of tells you where slightly your quarterback's going to start running to. In this case, we can have him going to the left. Notice how quick that was. I mean, as soon as you practice, as soon as the quarterback practically gets the ball, 
you're practically in motion, ready to go, ready to fire off and get some yards out of it. Very quick concept. That's why I like it. It just doesn't take long for the quarterback to get going. Just a terrible blocking there. We could try to again, maybe in on a positive note. There we go, a little bit better. And the one thing you got to remember about these quarterback run plays is, I'll show you right here. Let's go back to QB draw. Let's go up against cover two man. Against man, the reason why so many teams run, like to run their quarterback is because you're gaining an extra man on offense. By default, you know, the defense has 11 players. You have 11 players. But if your quarterback isn't running, he's kind of defenseless, which means you're going 10 on 11. So you're losing the man. But if you run with your quarterback, you're gaining that extra man, and now it's an even playing field. So to go along with that, if you're going up against man, everybody's got a hat on a hat. Now, notice we're going against cover two man. You've got the two safeties doing the cover two. All three cornerbacks are on the receivers. And then the right to our right, the linebackers on the tight end, and the other linebackers on the halfback. So who's on the quarterback? You're gaining an extra man advantage, which is excellent. That's why so many teams, coaches, love to run the ball with the quarterback, and I understand why. So that's something to think about. It really is, is great against man. It works good against zone two. You just got to pick your holes and cut up field. But that's just something to think about whenever you want to uh, start using a quarterback in the run game. Next up is inside draw. If QB draw was excellent, inside draw stinks to no end. We'll cover it, though. Draw plays with the halfback draw slash inside draw from the gun sets are terrible. They're slow, and I'll show you how and why. Okay? We're going up against man, it doesn't matter. But as soon as you snap the ball, look how long it takes for the halfback to get the ball. And by then, you got nowhere to go. you got to have perfect blocking in order to do anything with this. You can't flip it. It doesn't make a difference. If you get excellent blocking, you still may get two or three yards. Good luck for that happening, though. I never use it just because it's just too slow here. I can get some yards, but just don't expect much from it. Okay. Next up is halfback off tackle. You look at the play art here and you notice that your entire offensive line is pretty much doing zone blocking, but your right guard and your tight end are pulling. So you got a double pull. It's pretty much a like a wing T type of sweep play. And you don't, all you have to do is press the snap button and automatically gets it to the halfback. The only downside to this play, though, is you can't flip it the direction of the run. I wish you could. It would be cool if you did, but you can't. So you're at the mercy of your blockers, which can be pretty good in this particular play. Here's a pretty good game as is. We can break this play down. I had a good blocking across the board, and by the time the halfback got the ball, and by the way, this is a really quick read in terms of just your halfback getting the ball. He gets it, and you're off and running. And you get pretty decent blocking for the most part. The problem is you can't do anything about some shifts. Here, we'll eventually see it. But we should get a good game here. Not bad there. But eventually, the defensive line is going to shift to the other side. And then you're at the kind of the mercy of it. And you got to hope for the best. Here's just not very good blocking. I'm kind of waiting for them to shift to that side. But if, if for whatever reason the defense shifts to that side, one thing I've tried to do is move the tight end over. It, sometimes it helps. In that case, it didn't. But you just got to take your chance at it. It's a good play. It just has its limitations. And I just fumbled. But it's a good play, though. I like it. It's simple. If you're running a, it, you know, any offense that doesn't really require a quarterback to run the ball and you like to run the ball from the gun, this is a good play to work with. I like it. But, again, it has its limitations. Next up is, that is it for the run plays in this uh, formation. There's only four of them. Uh, the rest of them are pass plays, so let's just get right into it. The first one, uh, when you pop up uh, shotgun normal, is corners. Now, you look at corners on the left here. If you remember on the previous videos, I always look for my short zone beater. The only one that really you can find is your delayed wrap by your halfback. So, as is, I think this is better off as a right hash play. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to try this. We'll see if this works or not. I'm going to go offensive only. I think we can go through this a little bit quicker. And I'll just show you which ones are good. That way you could just focus on your players and not have to worry about, you know, the where the defense is at. Like when I play on offense, I don't know if I've ever said this, but I don't pay a whole lot of attention to where the players are at. As soon as I look for safeties, I just kind of know where to look at. 
That's why I just want you to focus on the players and not so much on the defense. So we're going to go corners, and we're going to go off, off the right hash, okay? Cover zero. We'll start with man. Cover zero, you got two options. Basically, you got your flag route, and you got the post. We could try the flag route. You know, you just do a tap of the button, and it'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation there. Next, we have the post route. You can go to him over the top, and that's a duck of a play. We'll try that again. But this is another good cover zero beater. I would just do a medium to light press because if you throw it too hard, his defender may get in front of it. Other than that, when it comes to man, uh, cover one, you can go back to the flag route. Usually he can get, it'll be just him and his defender in that situation. You can try the shallow. He's not going to get open all the time, but at least he can do a pretty good job of shielding himself from his defender. And that's kind of it. I mean, the tight end is going to be kind of a tough one to go for. What you maybe can do, just because he's got no room to work with, and I'll show you. We can go here. I mean, you can do a media press, and, I mean, you're just threading the line right there. So what you can possibly can do, if you want, you can go over here. He's got more grass to work with if you just really want to give it to your tight end. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation right here. Usually cover one. Otherwise, if it's cover two, you're going to be going to your shallow. And that's kind of it. That's the only downside to this play is it's not all that good underneath against man. The halfback, I mean, you could take your chances, but you're not going to get a whole lot because by the time he gets it right here, his defender's going to be all over him. So you're taking a chance with that right there. Now, when it comes to zone, cover two, cover three... The only real options you have, I mean, if you got a very soft, soft cover two, no block or no pressure whatsoever, you can go to your flag and he'll will be right with the free safety. It'll just be him and the free safety. We'll go down there. Otherwise, your only safe bet, to be honest, is your halfback as your short zone. Cover two, cover three, cover four. If it's cover four. You can also try to go over to the middle, your center beater, to the shallow, okay? Again, your tight end, he's just not going to get open against zone. It's just going to be tough. Now, some people may be thinking, can we play this on the left hash? If it's cover two, you got your post, you got your tight end on the right side. You can go to either one, and your shallow may get open underneath, but usually just cover four or if there's a hole there. It doesn't have to always be cover four as long as there's just a hole over your center. But to be honest, it's just not guaranteed. So you're kind of just picking your poison. It's not the best play, especially against man. But I think it just a tad bit better against on the right hash and against zone. So take that for what you will. Okay. Next up, we'll talk about tight end delay. One of the best ones in the formation. And that's saying something. You could do either hash, but it technically, I think, works better off the left hash. So we'll just start there. We'll go to the left hash. Your cover zero beaters, you got your post and you got your corner. I would just do a tap and let do him do a one-on-one -on -one situation there. We can scoot this up, maybe get a touchdown or two if you want. We can go to the 25. You can go to the corner. Again, I would just do a, a press to a tap, more or less. That was a little bit hard. But it's just going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation against cover zero. Then it's time to cover one. You can go back to the corner. As you see me doing this a hundred million times in my fun and gun offense, not in this formation, but a corner route is a corner route. Also, you can go to your slot receiver, just a little zig out. You could go to him right there. Now, one thing I do want to show you is we were going to put this back to normal. And there's some advantages with the halfback here. We're going to delay and we're going to get a 4-3 cover two. Okay, the linebacker on the left is covering our zig out. One thing you could do, since he's covering the zig out, very good chance the middle linebacker is covering your halfback. But if you motion your slot over, now it brings that guy over. So he's got a little bit more grass to cover. And what you could do is go to the halfback. Something to think about. You could do it really quickly, like right here. Boom. And his defender has even more room or more grass he's got to cover. So since I've done it so quickly, now who is defending him? It's the far right linebacker out there. Look at all this space he's got. And this halfback's really slow too. So this isn't even a great example. 
But I'm just kind of giving you a rough idea of what to expect. If you see a linebacker, if it's man covering that slot, no reason why you can't bring this guy over and bring him over. You don't have to do this. You can leave it as is. You can have the middle linebacker on the halfback. It kind of depends on the matchup. If they got a crappy middle linebacker, you may want to keep it as is. And you can go to there, or you can switch that guy over. But that's just something I wanted to point out. Okay. Let's go back to offensive only. Let's go back to tight end delay, and that's it. All four routes are really good against man. The only downside to this play is your tight end is kind of useless. If you want to make him more useful, I mean, you can have him go on a dig if you wanted to. You can go right there. Otherwise, or you can have him block. It just it, It's up to you, however you want to do it. But the other routes are great against man. Okay, now again, zone, you don't have as many options on the left hash, but we can cover them. One thing you can try to do, if it's cover two, is hot route your tight end to a go. What this does is, if it's cover two, and you don't have a whole lot of blitzing on this side, a lot of pressure, you can go over to this guy right here, and he can get a pretty easy touchdown. Otherwise, if that isn't working, you can just go to your zig out. He is your short zone beater. That's why I prefer this play on the left hash. Okay? And that's it for zone. Now, what you can do is you can do this off the right hash. Again, your post, your corner, or cover zero, that doesn't change. Your zig out now has more grass to work with against man. You can go here, but you're losing the space for your halfback on this side. So he's not much of a zone beater. See, he automatically goes to the outside or to the sideline. Against zone, you have a few more options. Uh, technically, two more. If it's cover two, you could try to go to the post. Technically, you could go attack cover three and cover four, like you saw in that previous video. A backside post could technically work against any zone coverage. Okay. Uh, otherwise, your safe, your short zone beater is going to be your halfback. He should get open under here. Now, you may have to throw it a little quicker, like as soon as he gets to the sideline, may have to throw it kind of hard. If it's if you see a hole over the middle, though, what you can do against zone. Always go and move your slot to the right side, and he may be able to be a center beater. Something to think about. Otherwise, this play works good on both hashes. I just think it works a slightly better off the left. It kind of depends. I mean, this is like the best man uh, hash, and this is the right hash is really great against zone. Either way, it's an excellent play, and I like it, even though the tight end is not very useful. Well, speaking of, we can do this. If you know, if you want another short zone or a center beater, you can make your tight end more useful, and you can have him become a center beater right there. Okay, another one to think about. All right, next up, we have all curls. This is sort of, to me, this is a right hash play because our short zone beater is our swing route with the halfback. You have no cover zero beaters, technically. I mean... You could still leave it as is and call curls all you want, or you can hot route one to a go route like this one right here if you want to. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to do this, but if you really want a cover zero beater, just hot route somebody. Otherwise, man, you're going to either curl to the outside. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of going to the ones over the middle against man. It's just it's going to be kind of tight. Sometimes the corners, the defenders can get right in front of it. You just never know. And I wouldn't bother with a halfback for man. I would just think about it for zone. Now, for zone, you have some options. Now, you've seen me run this a few times, not in the last Dynasty, but I've talked about it in the past. The stick concept. You know, it's a staple air raid concept. Typical stick is this concept on the right. It's a triangle raid. You got your go, you got your little hitch with the tight end, and you got your swing route. Okay, now you don't have to hot route uh, your circle to a go route. But when it's zoned, what I like to do is motion my little hitch, my little stick route to the slot. I think it gets open a little bit better right here, and that's a good little zone beater. Otherwise, you could go to your halfback. Both of them will be open regardless of zone. And also, if you have a center beater, you can go to that guy right there sometimes. Just something to think about. Okay. Uh, 
Next up is halfback corner. We got a short zone beater on the left side, so I'm going to treat this as a left hash play. Your go route and your post or your man, your cover zero beaters. Cover one, you can go to either any of the three guys underneath. Like, you can even try the halfback if you want. He'll be by himself with him and his defender. You can go right there. That's like a little LSU Joe Burrow, uh, Joe Brady type of play or type of route. Or you could just go to the out route for man. Sometimes you can even give it to your tight end. He can get pretty good separation from, from his defender there as well. So all five routes are really good against man. Killer. Now when it comes to zone, you still have a few options. You can go to the post against cover two, three, or four. As soon as he makes his break, you throw it hard as you can. You can go to your short zone beater, which is going to be your at route. Or if you see a hole open over the middle, it's your first read. For me, it is. You can try to go to your tight end. And if you want, you can try to make this a little bit quicker. I would throw it like right here with a medium press. Okay. And that's it for your zone beaters, but at least it's pretty good. Very good play overall. I really like it. Next up is halfback angle. Excellent play. I've used this a ton. Uh, it's a left hash because we got a little hitch on the left. We'll just consider that as a left hash play. You got your go route as a cover zero beater, and that's kind of it. The rest of it, you got your out route is just is the best man beater you can think of in the game. I love it. And that's kind of it in terms of, uh, well, you can go to your halfback at times. Just be careful if there's a man or another extra defender sitting there. Your flag route, he doesn't have a whole lot of room to work with over here. So if you want to get into habit, you can maybe mo motion him over. And he's got more grass to work with. If it's cover one or cover zero, you can maybe try to do this. But he's the least important route in the play. Okay, and that's kind of it for man. Again, zone, you have two options. If there's a hole over the center, you go to your halfback right here. Otherwise, you're just going to go to the hitch. That's kind of it in terms of zone. And you can cut up field, do what you got to do there. So, against zone, it's not the best. It's meant to attack the short field against zone. But against man, it's killer. I love this play in general. Now, you would think it's only a left hash play, but technically you can do this off the right hash. Okay? Man, it's no different except you got an extra man beater now. Your flag rat has more grass to work with. So if it's covered with zero or one, you can throw it over the top and it'll just be him and his defender. Really nice. Now, that means your Z receiver, your at rat on the right, doesn't have as much field to work with, but you can always just motion him over a little bit, and now he's got a little more grass to play with. Okay? You just wait about a second. Get him, him closer to you to tight end. Now he's got some grass to work with, okay? And everything else stays the same, and of course your hitch can't work against man. But when it comes to zone, you got an extra option more or less. It's actually it's the same as the one on the left hash, but what you do is you motion your hitch over to this side. He will be open against zone every time. Boom, it's like a little stick route, okay? Again, just motion your X receiver over here. Again, zone, do that, and he'll be open. And then it's no different with the halfback. If you see a hole above your center, you can just bounce it to him and get a game there. Really good play. Believe it or not, it can work off both hashes, even though, I mean, I don't know. It works pretty good off either hash. Great play in general. If I can get to it. Okay, next up is PA wide receiver in. It's an okay play. There's no short zone beater, but whenever you see that switch combo, the wheel and the post, I always want that to the strong side of the field. So in this case, it's going to be a right hash play for us. Okay, we'll bring this over to the right hash. Against man, all three routes are great. Both routes on the left are cover zero beaters, but cover zero alone. So if you see cover one or two, you pretty much have no choice but to go to your dig right here. Now, if you don't feel all that safe and throwing to him over the middle, you can always motion him to the left. And what do you have? You have an out route. It's actually a little bit safer against man if you do this. I think so. That's a terrible throw. We can try that again. But against man, you may want to get in the habit of just moving him over. We'll play action. Throw it to him. Boom. 
and he's off to the races, okay? Again, zone, it's tough. This is the downside of this play. There's not a whole lot to work with. You typically only have the post route. And the problem, and I don't know if you noticed this, the post is kind of steep, meaning it doesn't go like this. It kind of cuts up like this. I like post rats that are a little more horizontal, but in this case, he isn't. I mean, he kind of cuts up in a, this pass ain't the best in the world, but he's not at much of a diagonal. It's just something to think about. The only downside to this play is it's just not all that great against zone. The only other thing I can think of that may work is you can hot route your tight end since he's a blocker. You can hot route him to an out. Maybe he can get open on that side, but you're taking a chance. I wouldn't suggest it. This is a great turnover play. Your defense just gets a turnover. You're on offense. You run a little play action. Maybe you can go over the top to somebody or get somebody open. Either way, it's a good play. It's just not that great. Next up is halfback screen. I like to throw my screens to the short side. Since our screener is going to the right, we are going to go off the right hash. Cover zero, you got two guys. You got your Z receiver and your X receiver going over the top. Otherwise, you're going to go to either your halfback against man, or you can hot route either. You can hot route any of them, but I'll, for any screen, I like to hot route some useless route to an out route. In this case, I do not like the route L1 is showing right here. I prefer to do a little hot route to an out, and I can just go to him really quick. Okay. Now, one thing we're going to show you, I'm going to go back to normal. And we're going to go up against man. And we're going to go up against cover two. You notice, I'll show you, it works better off the play art. You notice right here, your left guard, your center, and your right tackle. And yeah, yeah, your inner, your center middle three lineman, your interior line, is going to be your screening or blocking for your halfback. So you don't have a whole lot of time to work with, nor do you have a whole lot of space. So, against man, I would just back up. You can hot wrap the slot to and out again. I back up, and then you throw it to him. Every screenplay, just keep backing up. Do not use the speed button. You'll lose traction if you do that. But you can go to him and try to do something there. Or, again, you can just go to your halfback, do a medium press of the button, and hope for the best there. Okay? Then we can go back to practice type and go offense only. Again, zone, what you could do, again, is you could take a useless route and give you an extra zone beater. So what you could do for L1 is you can hot route him to a slant, gives you a center beater. If you're feeling the heat and there's a big hole open in the middle, you can try to give it to him. Of course, that was a terrible throw. We could try it again. You could do a dig if you wanted to. Either way, it works fine. I think the, the slant works a little bit quicker. But this play is designed to get to your halfback, especially against zone. So you could just go to him if you want. You keep backing up, and you give it to him. But you could get in the habit of at least hot routing one of your receivers to a, a slant or a dig, whatever it takes to get you an extra zone beater just in case. You keep backing up, big old hole, and you're off to the races. Okay, and that's kind of it for that play. It's a really good play. It is what it is. I kind of wish the slot receiver was a default better man beater, but that's what hot routes are for. Okay, next up is P.A. Reed. Maybe the most popular play in the formation. We'll break it down. It's a left hash play because our short zone beater is a halfback going to our left. We'll go to the left here. Now, what we can do is let's just go and do, go back to normal. Since this is a run play, we technically have to treat it as such. So let's go up against... Uh, cover zero. Hopefully we can get to pull this off. Okay, if it's cover zero, you only got one option. Basically, you can go over the top to your Z receiver, the post route, and it hit the goal post, which is pretty funny. Okay, otherwise, you have the option to run the ball. If you see something like this, if you see the line to that left side as such, keep it. Do not give it to your halfback. Give it to your halfback. Something bad's going to happen more than likely. Okay. You can, I mean, there's not going to be a whole lot of room to work with. Now, if you go up against like a cover two, 
for a cover one, then you got some options. But again, just pay attention to the line and only give it to your halfback if you're feeling, uh, if you see some room right there and you think you have a little bit of an advantage. So we're going to go back to offense only. Go back to P.A. Reed. So let's just pretend we're not going to give it to our halfback. We already talked about the post for cover zero. Otherwise, the other three routes are pretty good against man. You got your crossing route. It's pretty good. Just throw it as hard as you can. Let him do his thing there. You could go to the back side of him. You can go to the dig if you want. He makes his cut. You can go to him there. You could even go to the halfback. He's not going to get a whole lot of separation, but you can at least try it if you need to. But he's your fourth read on that right there. Again, zone, you got several options here. You got three to be exact. This is like as good a zone beater as you can ask for. You got your post route, which is good against cover two, three, and four. If you see a big hole open over the middle, which is always your first read, go to your crossing route. And when in doubt, go to your short zone beater, which is your halfback, and he got caught by the tackle. We could try that again. Oh, he got caught. There we go. All right. You could go to him to the short zone. Okay. Again, center beater first. See if there's a hole there. Terrible throw. If not, look for coverage. If you've got no pressure, you could go to the post. Or, when in doubt, just give it to your halfback. He got caught by his halfback. You get the hint. Okay. Excellent play, though. It's killer. Maybe the best play in the formation. It, it kind of depends. Okay, next up is tight end cross. One of my favorite plays in the game. It's an excellent third and long play. You have no short zone beater, but this is really meant to go deep anyways. I mean, look at all four rats. They're all going 10 yards and further. And if you have no short zone beater, you look for a combo. In this case, we got a go post combo. Those always work on the short side of the field. Therefore, I always call this on the left hash. Okay. Cover zero, you got your go and you got your post. Otherwise, you can go to your crossing route with your tight end. A great route for any tight end with any type of speed. You can go to your dig. If it's cover one or two, you can go to him there. Okay. Pretty simple in terms of man. All four routes are great. Okay. Against zone, what we're going to do is... First of all, let's talk about cover two. You got your post. Sometimes you may see a cover three, and he can get open. It just kind of depends. Your first read, as usual, is always your center beater, and we have one in the tight end. He can get open right there. But we got another beater, or zone beater, and it is the tight end again. And I'll show you. Hopefully I can pull this off. Let's go back to normal. Let's go back to tiny cross against cover three, against certain cover threes. This guy can get open. We're going to try this. On the left hash, your tight end can get open against cover three if you have the time to throw it. Look at this. He can get open against cover three a little bit. And the reason why is because both the go and the tight and the uh, post route, you see this player right here? He gets pulled by the post. Notice the post and this defender are going together. While he's going that way, look who's going underneath. You're tight end. Something to think about. If you see cover three, definitely look for the tight end. He can definitely get open. Otherwise, again, your post, you got your tight end. Those are your, basically your two, go, your two zone beaters. Excellent play. I tend to use this on third and long more than anything else. But if you're into a vertical type of offense in general, by all means, use that play. It's excellent. You get good blocking as well with your halfback. You got six blockers, which is great. Next up is seam attack. Seam attack, we got one short zone beater, and it's our halfback going to the right. So this will be a right hash play for us. And we'll go back to offense only. Right hash. Again, cover zero, uh, you got four options. Let's put it that way. Now, the only downside to this play is... You're limited in terms of man by default. Yes, if you don't see cover zero, you can try to go to your halfback, but his defender will be all over that cat. So what you can do is you can hot route somebody to an out route. Now, since we're on the right hash, we have more grass to work with on the left side, which means, in my personal opinion, I think you're better off hot routing one of the two guys on this side, on the left, to an out. You can do it with... 
this guy right here. Then you got all this grass to play with. Or you can do it with the slot receiver. You can do this. Or what if you have a stud tight end? You can motion this guy over. And while he's mo moving over, you can have him go to an out route. Again, the safest man beater you can think of. Just a terrible throw. Or you can do it with the other receiver as well. So you've got a lot of options with a four verts look. You just have to do a little hot rounding against man if you don't want to give it to your halfback. Against zone, you only have one option, basically. Uh, sometimes, I mean, you notice, look at the tight end's go route. It's kind of a slant in a way. It's not a perfect straight line. He kind of goes inward. What we can do, we can do pass skeleton if I can get to it. And we could try to do this against cover two. I've never really tried this. This is kind of an experiment, to be honest. If I can get to it, seam attack. Against cover two, can our slanted go wrap our tight end get open? I don't think he can. Yeah, that's not a good play. That's why I never threw that. All right, now we know. But we can go back, go here, go off its only. Against zone, you only have your short zone beater, which is your halfback by default. But what you can do is get another zone beater over the center, which is always our first read if we have it. You could do the tight end on a dig, center beater. You can do the slot on a slant, center beater. I would pick either one because they're closer to the center. So if I would be doing it, I'd probably be doing this or something. If I don't see a hole open over the center, I'll just go to my halfback and move on to the next play. Okay? Really good play. You just have to use a hot rat or two to really make it work. Next up is wide receiver short post. This is technically an either hash, a both hash play. We'll start off with the left hash because whenever you see a flat route, automatically think a zone beater. It always works on the short side. We'll go over here. The only downside to this play are the two skinny posts. I don't like them. They're, they just don't work all that well. There's a very good chance that the defender will get in front of the post and pick it off. And neither one is very good for cover zero because what happens is you think this guy could be one-on-one -on -one with his defender, but by the time you throw it, this guy's defender will be over here, which means he'll probably be double teamed. Something to think about. So you don't really have much of a cover zero beater. You can hot route somebody if you needed to. You can go over the top like this. But otherwise, against man, you're kind of limited in this particular situation. Now remember what formation we're in. And think about tight end delay from before. If you see a 4-3, move this guy over, and that way you can get your halfback involved a little bit more. Get him separated from his defender, or you can leave it as he is. Otherwise, he's your only really good man beater on the left hash. Okay, and that's kind of it. Your tight end, it just doesn't work all that well against man. He'll get picked off more often than not. And that's kind of it. Your flat rat, it's kind of useless against man. I mean, you can try to hot rat him as such, but it's just not a whole lot to work with. Okay, so it works okay on the left hash. I personally believe it works best off the right hash. Let's go over here and let's go up against pass skeleton. And we got to show you some things. Let's go to pass skeleton. We're going to go up against, we're going to pick that. We're going up against a 4-3. Let's go up against a cover 2, okay? Notice what happens here. Again, that linebacker is hovering over, he's defending the slot route. Since that flat route is so quick, as soon as you snap it, you could go to your slot route and look at the separation he has. You saw me use this quite a bit in the first season of our UNLV dynasty. Oh, yeah, you could go right here and he just picked it off. Now it's my bad. I threw it way too light. Let's see if we can get stop. <laughs> there we go. You could do that, or if you do not feel comfortable throwing that flat route, because it requires some timing, by all means, move him to an out route, and you got a much safer route to work with. Okay? Otherwise, your man beaters are kind of the same as what we had before. But what we have here is, we'll go back to offensive type. We'll go to wide receiver short post. Your zone beaters you have a little more options to work with, okay? Now, before we talked about against zone, you only had your flat route on the left hash. That's kind of it. Sometimes your hitch can get open over the center if you see a big hole right there, but not always. Those are your only zone beaters on the left hash. On the right hash, you have 
a little more options to work with, sort of, kind of. We got a stick rat again with our tight end, just like we had with that other play that's on my mind. Anyway, if you see zone, when in doubt, I wish his motion or tight end over. He will be open 99% of the time. He won't get a whole lot of yards, but he should get open. Again, every time you see zone on the right hash, just move it over here. You can go to him. Okay? Or you can go to your main short zone beater, and you can just go to your halfback cutting up field. That's a really great play or good route against cover three. But that's kind of it for zone. If you want to get another route in there, what you can do is get another center beater if needed. I don't think it's needed all that much. Again, your zone beater's on the right hash. Just focus on your tight end and your halfback. It's an okay play. I, it would be a whole lot better if those skinny posts were something else, but it is what it is. Okay. Next up is arrows. This, to me, is a right hash play because we got one short zone beaner. That's our tight end. So let's start there. Man, you technically got two options, but to be honest, your only good option is your deeper slant. The problem with that is, if you notice, look how close your two receivers are. That means these two defenders are going to be double teaming wherever the ball is going. So your cover zero beaters aren't really there unless you go to your only good cover zero beater, to be honest, is your slot route. Your slot is a wheel route. Just wait until he gets some separation. He makes his cut, and you go to him. So cover zero, I wouldn't bother with the two normal ones. I would go to this guy right here if you can. Oh, again, just wait till he kind of cuts up field. Okay? Otherwise, your man beaters, you really only have one. The slant on the right is not as good as the one on the left. The one on the left does a really good job. I would go to him. You could attempt to go to the Z receiver, but I'm just telling you right now, I think the one on the left works much better. And that's it in terms of man. And zone, you have two options. You got a center beater kind of with your slant on the left, but look how far he is. I mean, he's like right here, and he's not right here. So what you can do is make another zone beater of some sort. You could probably do this. You can hot rat your this guy right here. You're taking a chance. But what I would do, the only good zone beater you have, the only true one you have is your tight end. The problem with the tight end, and we'll show you this. We'll go back to pass skeleton. And we'll go up against uh, cover. Eh, I hit the wrong button. My bad, my bad. Let's go here. We'll go up against a cover two. The only problem, if you leave everything as is, is your tight end can't go anywhere because this corner has nothing to do but cover the tight end. He has no receiver up here to go after. He only has one guy in his zone, and it's the tight end. So you don't have a whole lot to deal with there. I mean, what do you do? Now, what you can do, you can either hot route Z to a go, it should open your tight end a little bit better as such. <laughs> or what I would do, since your slant rat isn't the best against zone since he's too far out, you can move, move him over. Move him over. You can move him over to the right, and he distracts that corner. Again, notice what happens here. That slant rat now becomes a, a flag or whatever you want to call it. But he distracts his corner big time. Look how far away he is from this tight end. Then you could give it to him. I threw it way too late, by the way. But you could pick up some decent yardage that way. That's kind of it for that play. It's not one of my favorites. It could be better. But as long as you either hot rat or motion somebody to distract that corner on that side for your tight end, you could do some damage with it. Okay, next up is wide receiver stutter slant. You technically don't have a short zone beater. You would think that tight end... Could work, but honestly, it doesn't work all that well as he is as a short zone beater. But I believe this play works a little bit better as a left hash play. It can work off both, but we'll do left for now. Uh, let's go back to track this top. Okay, let's move it over to the left. Okay, man, cover zero. You got two options. You got the post or the flag. Otherwise, you can go to your dig underneath. You can do that, okay? If it's a little crowded in that area, 
if you want, you can motion, move him over and he can become basically an at round. And it's a one-on-one -on -one situation with him and his defender there. Your tight end, I wouldn't bother. It just, he's going to get bogged down and usually his defender can pick that off or what have you. There's not a whole lot to work with there. Okay. Against zone, or okay, I'm sorry, against man, again, you have your two zero beaters, but what you can also do is hot route your slot to a go. The odds are he's going to have a linebacker or a safety on him, so he should be able to get decent separation between him and his defender. Something to think about. You don't have to do it, but a go is usually better against cover zero than a post route. Okay, against zone, the only thing you can really do here to bring up two zone beaters is hot route your dig or your slant, whatever you want to call it, to a go. You hot route square to a go, and what do you have? You got a go post on the left. That's why I like this on the left hash. Cover two, sometimes cover three, and even cover throw, cover throw. Cover four, you can do it over the middle. Or sometimes your tight end can get open if there's a hole right there, a la a center beater or whatnot. So again, against zone, I suggest you hot route square to a go. And then you got a couple options over the middle. Think of this as a slot deep outs, but instead of two out routes on the outside, you got to go in a flag more or less. So something to think about. Really good play. It just requires a bit of hot routing to make it shine. Last but not least is halfback streak. Again, a killer play. It's one of the top three or four. It is a right hash play because our short zone beater, in this case, is our shallow route going to our right. Therefore, it is a right hash play. Okay. Cover zero, you got three options. Technically, you got your halfback over the top. You got your post route with your tight end. You can go to your flag route on the other side. What I would do, if neither one of those are open because it's cover one or uh, cover zero, against man, always move your Z receiver over to the left a little bit, closer to the tight end so he has more room to work with. He is your main man beater. Move him over a little bit, and he's got more grass to work with. Every time it gets man, just get in the habit of doing it, bringing him over a little bit so he has enough room to do damage. Otherwise, cover one, you can go to your at route, of course, but you can also go to the flag route if you're feeling dangerous. I love, I'm starting to love these flag routes. Or you could try to go to your shell. Now, your shell doesn't work all that great against man. He can get separation sometimes, but it's not as good as he would against zone. And speaking of zone, we have... Three options against zone, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe just two. Your center beater could go to your shallow over the middle. Or you can leave it as is, and your short zone beater is your shallow. You just got to give him a little bit more time to work with. You also have a post route. Cover two, sometimes cover three. Maybe even cover four, depending on what's happening. Your post route can always be there for you. It just kind of depends on what's going on at the time. If you're feeling the heat, don't give it to them. Just go down low to your shallow and be done with it. And that's kind of it for zone. Excellent play. I love it. I love it. I love it. But it is a right hash play. All five routes are worth it for sure. Okay, that is it. Let's just break these down really quick. Corners, it's okay. It needs a little work. Speed option is excellent. It is what it is. Tight end delay, it's really good. I like it. All curls. Could be better, but it's not bad. QB draw, I love it. Halfback corner, I really like it. Halfback angle, I love it. All the five routes are great. Inside draw, worst play in the formation. PA wide receiver end is just average because you don't have a whole lot to work with, but it's a good turnover play. Halfback screen, it's a good play. You just need a heart route or two to really make it work, but otherwise you get pretty good blocking for your halfback. Halfback off tackle would be even better if you could switch the direction of the run, but you can't, but that's okay. At least you get a, two pulling players to help you out on the blocking. P.A. Reed is amazing. Amazing play. All four routes are great. The tight end is great as a blocker. You can't go wrong with that play there. Tight end cross, third and long. Excellent. Or just whenever you feel like it. Great left hash play. Seam attack. With an extra heart route from somebody, you could do some serious damage with this play here. Wide receiver short post. Oh, one thing about seam attack. Let's just talk about this one really quick. If you want to isolate somebody, the only problem we're going to have, if you leave everybody as is, 
is, like, for instance, say we go to square against cover zero. What's the problem here? You break it down, they're too close to each other, these two guys, and I want space with my routes. If they're too close to each other, which means their two defenders will be right there with you. So it's like a 2 one 2 situation, which we don't want. So what you can do is you can, and I, forgive me for not talking about this before, you can motion this guy over, and you can go to this guy. He now has all this field to himself and his defender. You can motion X over to get gold or L1 isolated on this side as well. And I pressed the wrong button. I'm an idiot. But you get the point. You can motion any of these guys over to separate or isolate somebody else. Like here, we could go to the tight end. He has a little more isolation. So again, something to think about. Okay, back to the summary. Seam attack, excellent. If you do a little motion, a little hot routing, you can do some serious damage with it. Wide receiver short post is average. It, it's okay. Really good on the right hash, but it's one of the average plays. I like it just because you can run a little stick with it. Next up, arrows. It, it's okay, but you need to motion a little bit with it. It's not one of my favorites, but it's not too bad. Wide receiver stutter slant, an extra heart rate or two, and you can do some serious damage. And halfback streak is just a killer play. I love it. All five routes are great off the right hash. So there you go. Out of the 18 plays, there's like 15 of them I really, really like. You can run so many different things with this formation. So I highly recommend. I, honestly, I think it works with any offense you could think of. It's a win and doubt. It could be your one gun play if, or gun formation. If you're an under center guy for whatever reason or if you're a spread. I mean, it's one of the most used formations in the game for a good reason. It's got good motions, good sub packages, and great plays. Awesome formation. I can't recommend it enough. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.